Good morning. I'm pleased to be here. Let's talk about the things we can do something about. I'd like to concentrate as a senior physician on what they can do to feel good. What's the first thing that comes to mind when you talk about a patient feeling good and taking care of their own well-being? To, to help them understand the simple things that they can do. So is the message then about keeping it simple? Amen. Amen. Thank you. Keeping it simple is what it's all about. Camera I think we ought to start by talking a lot about patients' attitude toward themselves and their illness and to make them feel that they should that they are precious, they are important and should do everything to take good care of themselves and people should be helpful to them. However, they must also learn that whatever you do in your life, do something to create and make yourself feel better. Don't project your illness onto everything and everyone else and be mad at, be mad at the world. You are the most important thing in the world. That's the thing that I want the patient to feel. And we want to do everything to make you feel good, but you can help. How can you help? Well, one of the things you can help is by pacing yourself and not overwhelming yourself with details in your illness and everything else around you. And that, of course, includes stress. I think patients should learn how to avoid, avoid or minimize stress. The, we realize that the illness itself is a very stressful thing, but let's eliminate things that aren't important and aren't, uh, aren't, aren't vital. Now, doctor, you started talking about attitude, and then were you referring to pacing and stress as part of attitudinal yes. changes? Or are those separate dis subjects no, under I think themselves? It's, no, I think they're all, they're all re related. They have to be comfortable in everything they can with their environment. Too many people, for example, uh, waste time with their lunch hour. To use that as a, as, as a period of relaxation, as a period of neutrality. I like to use the term neutral because we try to keep our mind neutral. Frequent episodes of quiet time help the patient. How can you adjust your attitude when you're confined to the house or you're confined to bed? Or you are in a, in a situation where your family doesn't understand, let alone sometimes even believe that you're sick, or the physician that you're d dealing with doesn't believe in chronic fatigue syndrome or ME-CFS or whatever the current label is. How can an individual start dealing with their own attitude and oh, changing it. You bring up such a great point, or should I say points. Uh, the sad thing is that patients are on the defensive. Well, I think we're talking about compassion. Compassion for each other, compassion between right. doctor and patient. I think mm -hmm. we're talking about compassion within a relationship, but I've learned that it's very important also for me to be compassionate towards myself and listen to my own needs. Hmm. Otherwise, I can't be available towards Paula, anyone else. Paula, thank you. I can't be available towards anyone else or commit myself to a relationship unless I can recognize that I have my own needs, physical, and mental, emotional, spiritual, with myself and meet those needs so that then I can be available. I think that's great, and I think you can teach a patient like this, however, that there are other things you can suggest to make them feel better, including finding periods of neutrality, periods where you can, uh, can turn off your motor, because the, the trouble with people, they're so busy that they don't have time to meditate, sleep, anything that they can do that will give them short intervals of peace during the day. Now I heard you say something else in there too that I found very interesting and that was, let me paraphrase it, don't keep things bottled up and express yourself and express yourself freely and that's an important at aspect of attitude. Did I hear that right? Amen. I'm, I find myself using that term too often, but you both are going to be doing, saying the right things. Of course you got it right. 
if I have an antagonistic relationship with my partner, and I also have a doctor who doesn't believe that I'm really sick, what do I do there? Well, do you have I to go to my pastor or? No, the point, you start with the doctor first. And I think it's time to say to the doctor, uh, look, I know you don't appreciate what's going on. Uh, please get me another opinion. I know that you'll do the right thing by me. Build confidence in the doctor. And I know that if you have somebody in your family with this, who would you send it to? And I'd appreciate it if you do that. That doesn't mean that I have <coughs> uh, lost faith with you, but it needs for both of us to understand what's going on. And there's nobody in this world who can't benefit from a second opinion. I agree with that. I uh, have had that experience where I have felt stuck with a doctor. And I have said to uh, him in this case, if I was your wife or your sister, who would you refer me to or what would you recommend? It does shift the energy. It does help. It's a good question to ask if you feel, if the patient feels a need to be redirected. I think it's a good way to go. If I was your wife or, or sister, what would you do? Thank you. Then taking it back to you, then you can deal with the people around you. Now, what else can I do to relieve stress, mental stress? You mentioned meditation before. I mean, I, do I need to go find somebody to teach I, me to meditate, or can I read a book, or no, well, is meditation I, I'll make it just one of a variety of things that well, you can Well, I can do? Make, it, make it simple for you. There's several ways as far as getting knowledge on how to handle stress. All people should learn how to meditate. 20 minutes twice a day to be, being absolute quiet and trying to learn how to relax the mind. Andrew Weil, who writes a lot on, on, uh, on alternative medicine, medicine, in his books very often has a couple simple reading exercises that can help people and teach them how to learn the art of meditation. Everybody has to learn to give themselves periods of neutrality, periods of quiet, periods where they refresh their mind.